hi everybody so I'm on my way to stock up again at Sam's Club because as you all know Everybody turned a blind eye like oh it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't affect me at all the world didn't care for a couple of people you know for the people in the island didn't care well it wasn't as popular the news back then so we didn't have social media so people couldn't be as passionate about these injustices back in the day and now have these things happening in our country that they're trying to do. See, although all they have to do is surround us. They already got us. They got Venezuela that's communist. They're trying with Brazil, but Bolsonaro is a patriot. So they, they've tried killing him. They've tried doing a, a lot of things to Brazil, to Bolsonaro in Brazil. So that's where we are in our society today. this is a world domination is what it is and they're reckless about it now because they know that they have to move this fast they have to move this fast because for whatever reason the White House is empty and there's something going on behind the scenes that we don't know about and that's usually the way it works in these types of things because it's all from inside you understand but we have to keep hoping and praying that things turn around but I'll be honest with you the outlook doesn't look good at least we will be suffering probably for a while more before things take a change I'm really concerned about this convoy to Washington although most people who are patriots like me think it's a great idea for somebody to rise up the problem we saw with Canada is why they did it in Canada first because now they're learning you see this is all a learning they might have had a couple of demo situations with their mind control the victims of mind control that they use but until they actually release this kind of giant proportional plan they're not going to know if it works so they released it on Canada because they have a commie over there you know the son of Castro I don't know if you guys know this but that is the son of Castro and wouldn't you know it he and this guy let me tell you something he is just a pawn he's a pawn for the group that he is in okay and their way is to find some way to make an emergency declaration on all of us by emergency status you see because by emergency they can go behind the laws so if the convoy the same thing happens and now they declare no you can't be here you're blocking the road this this and that well, now they can control, now they can make mandate, is the word that they use, they mandate this emergency law where it's enacted and now it doesn't have to go to Congress, it doesn't have to go to the Senate, you know, and all of these people are those, those people are bribed anyway. This is why they want this because they don't want, they're bribed. This is so deep that at this point, these people that are inside the government that have been against all of this stuff, they're probably questioning themselves now and saying, man, this is really deep. This is really dangerous. This is all over the world. If I don't, if I don't stay with this clan, if I don't do what they tell me, I'm done for. See? This is, this is the things that are looping in their head right now and they're considering and they don't think these people aren't continuing to knock on the door and knock on the door and say hey you want to come to our side you want to come to our side you want to that's what's happening behind the scenes I can tell you this is a spiritual battle people this is not physical in any way this is all to break 
break you down mentally because they understand it's all spiritual and they have to break you down they have to break down your emotions they start with that with fear those are the same traits of Satan this is what Satan does he always breaks you down with fear and when he's done that he can tempt you temptation is bribery he can bribe you into doing whatever he wants for his glory right the minute that you succumb to him boom you're part of his world now he's got you you know and now you know you're a slave you're a slave to him like think about this morning i was thinking about this i was like man people had it good and then they became enslaved and they were enslaved to pharaoh we read about that in the old testament okay for years and years i mean these were hundreds of years generations of their family enslaved then god lifted up the israelites to save the world right to save everybody and yeah they did they 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 were a chosen people, but they failed every single time. You know, there, yeah, there were special people that were risen up. They were chosen by God to rise up and to change things, the direction of or the path that they were headed. And that's a good thing. There's always people that rise up for things like that. And that's a wonderful thing about God that he chooses people. And I'm hoping that if he's choosing you, you will listen in your heart and go to him with repentance and really start to follow him and just tell him even if you don't love him yet tell him that you love him or tell him i want to love you i want to love you man he's got a redeeming love for you that is like none other it's like none other in the world nothing else is going to satisfy you like the redeeming love of god it is incredible incredible it's an experience to behold your happiness is finally going to be fulfilled contentment true contentment and the power of who you are is going to shine through because you are made in the image of him once you realize that then that's the glory that he gets you understand and that's what he wants he wants your worship so we have to understand that we don't want to become slaves of these people but these people are so deceitful they're so deceitful all the time you know they'll tell you one thing today and they'll sweeten it for you with pretty words and then the next day you know once you agree to it because that's all they need they all they need is for you to comply the minute you comply you become complicit complicit in their scheme of whatever it is you become a part of their plan okay and for some people they get so much shame out of it they don't go to God for repentance you understand you have to humble yourself and say, you know, I was wrong. I did the wrong thing. I was thinking of myself only. I was thinking of my family. I mean, I love my family, but man, I did the wrong thing. You know, I put my family against thousands of other families, generations of family in the future. Because that's in essence what you're doing when you allow these kind of mandates and, and things to go into play here. So we have to understand that this is the propaganda that they want is this convoy is coming into Washington and it could have started by a couple of truckers and then there's infiltrated truckers that they put into this group to look like they're part of the patriotic truckers they go out there and then these people start manipulating them and telling them what to do you know it all it just they, they have to make them complicit so what happens is now things are going to get heated out there and they're going to do a mandate and when they do the mandate we're out of the laws we're out of the laws we're under this emergency thing that puts us away very far away from the constitution and they can enact this for as long as they want okay this is what they want so what happens here is that they can close our bank accounts they can seize your property they can take your pets this is how evil these people really are. This is how underhanded these people really are. A lot of us saw it. I've been talking about it for years. I, I did a video talking about war. And if you are an RVer, you are going to be in a lot of trouble. I already talked about this. I'm gonna post that video down below because you keep listening to the people who claim about freedom and living in a van and look
look how free I am and look at all this but yet they're making money off of the people that are watching okay they're asking for donations they're asking for patreon they're not living the real life of a van dweller and they claim so much freedom why don't you talk about freedom now freedom that's being suppressed in Canada we got people that are viewers in Canada don't they follow you don't they support your patreon in Canada from Canada and you don't talk about this stuff you know this part of my video was inspired by a video that was sent to me by a girl who's a van dweller and I think her I think her channel is called uncivilized I don't know I'll link it down below I don't watch her I don't watch any RVing channels I'll be honest with you I've already said this in the past because a lot of them are BS and they're made up and they're there just to give you a fantasy life. It's not real. But And I don't know her channel, so I'm not criticizing her, but I did love this video that she did because she said in that video, where are those people? Where is that cult that I spoke about years ago whose primary role was money? All these people talking, talking for years, you just gotta let them keep talking and put themselves in a hole. Why aren't they standing up for freedom now? Are they afraid they're gonna lose their paychecks and their hungry money? You know what? Everybody can do one good thing and do 20 illegal things behind the scenes. I've already said that in the past. You have to give people the chance to, to change their ways. And all I did was expose a lot of the things that I see and the things that God was showing me in the spirit that I had to put out put out now that wasn't an easy thing for me and I know a lot of the girls that I was traveling with at the time know how difficult that was a video for me but I had to get it out and I was hoping that things were going to change because it's really a shame that something that's so wonderful and so caring and loving you know a group meetup became into something so monetized and that's the problem when it becomes monetized that's the focus that it takes all the time and it's not really about the people and it's really about doing it so that okay we're gonna give away this we're gonna give away that but who are they giving it to are they really giving it to the public or are they giving it to somebody that they know because I have an email telling me that I don't want to expose this stuff because I'm past that in my life I moved on I do my own thing on my channel I'm not associated with none of these RV people anymore I don't want to be associated with none of these people because a lot of them are fake and phonies you know and they don't talk about freedom they don't talk about what's gonna happen when this situation occurs where this order like they did up north and they decide to shut down BLM and they decide to have camps or you can't go into an RV park what are you gonna do floating around out there you know now I will say this that on my Facebook page group for the girls that I was traveling with before all the evil girls started showing who their two colors was I made post there that if the girls had problems they could come and stay at my property well that's all decided to change that now because I can see that there's a lot of people that want to take advantage of other people they don't do anything they don't protect themselves they're just floating around the world thinking everything is fine and they don't pay attention to what's going on they don't make proper decisions you you try to help them and you try to help them focus and then they turn against you well you know what now you're gonna have to figure it out because according to my Bible I can forgive you I can still love you I can still talk to you but I don't want you around me because your ways your ways that you say are Christian are really not and I don't want to be infected with that type of Christianity that you have that doesn't have a redeeming love quality to it you understand so now you're gonna to have to prove to me that you do have that love that God has the kind of love that we should have for our brothers and our sisters you're gonna have to prove that I don't want to be around stuff like that because guess what my Bible says that I don't I shouldn't be around a lot of times uh, Yahushua Jesus he said he says you don't you don't be around people like that you don't I mean you still help them 
you can still heal them you can still save them if they fall in the lake but you don't be around people like that they have an inner journey that they have to take with him first before they should come into your life and stay in your life or be in your life that is where i'm at today i am at a point in my life that i'm just going to start focusing on myself and i mean not in a selfish way but you know, I've put a lot of years into YouTube, I grew my channel, and I love posting my Bible study, I love doing all that, but I realized that I am to take care of myself first, and I have to get my things in order, and I, and I don't have a big mess, but for this week, I'm really focusing on um, scenarios, I'm sitting down and writing scenarios, like what would I do if this happened? What would I do if this happened? I mean, these are things that they, they go in my head every once in a while, okay? And I'm like, in my head, I'm going through the things, but I don't complete them. It's like, well, I would do this, or I would do this. Oh, it's okay, I'll do this. But no, I really have to put them down and say, well, what if I this happened? What would I do? And how would I do it? And what time of the day? How long does it take to do this? You know, cooking a meal over a fire is not the same as being in a kitchen cooking a meal in your house with the door closed and no hungry eyes coming around. It's totally different. When you have people that are hungry for food and you're cooking outside, okay? So you gotta figure out how you're gonna do this stuff because things are gonna change. You're gonna change a lot. And, um, you know, I always thought, well, I'll just cook outside, whatever. But you know what? When people aren't preparing, they're gonna come looking for yours. And Every time you open the door to go outside and cook a meal outside, you're bringing problems into your world. So I have to sit down with various scenarios, and that's what I'm going to do today. I'm going to sit down and get those things figured out. So I'm also stocking up with some things, especially for my pets, because I realize that um, I, I have to have stuff for my pets. And you know what? At the end of the day, if I have to eat dog food, I eat the dog food. You understand? It's canned, it lasts for a long time. If there's kibble and I have to eat kibble, I wet the kibble and I eat the kibble. So, people think they're gonna have like, when still, well, all of this happens, you're not gonna be eating three meals a day, trust me. You might have a cup of coffee in the morning and, and you might have to have it black with no sugar because you gotta save your milk products for other things or you can put a little bit in there just a little bit it's not gonna be latte like you're going to ration out your meals if you don't have refrigeration so you're just cooking what you're gonna eat in that day and whatever is left you try to save it for as long as you can depending on the weather that you're in if you're in cold weather then you can put it outside covered up well so that you can save it for the next day you don't need refrigeration if you're in hot weather like me then you might just have to mix that in with your dog's food it has to be dog food for them too pet food because you can't save it so you have to pass it on and if you have pets that's also what they're what they're going to do they're going to eat you have to realize that if you don't have toilet paper what are you going to do for me i have two bottles i just ordered another one i have one bidet bottle and i ordered another one well mostly for christian when he comes back he has his own but in case my bottle ever breaks, breaks, I have a secondary bottle because that's how I clean myself is with a bidet bottle. I don't use toilet paper. I don't want to have anything that I rely on. And that's some of the plans that I'm going through this week. And my prepping notebook is what are the things that keep me reliant on going out to the store to shop for product? What are those things? Well, toilet paper is one of them. Got to get rid of that. Got to get rid of that in my life. I like to I like granola I like to buy granola I stop buying granola now I have a recipe where I make my own granola at home I buy the oats and I make my own granola and I have the nuts another thing I have in my freezer is nuts I have a bag of walnuts I have a bag of almonds if I'm ever hungry and they're frozen so that they don't go bad so if I get hungry guess what I can stock nuts in a bag and I can eat those okay so even I can give those to my dog I can chop them up and give them because they're high in protein so these are
these are the kind of foods that you want to have around because you think you want potato chips you gotta forget about that you're not gonna find potato chips you're not gonna find certain things out there and when you do you can't eat a whole bag at one point you might have to eat maybe three or four and then stop eating a lot of you don't know how to not stop eating once you once you get one Oreo in your mouth it's like you want to eat the whole pack you gotta have self-control because you are not going to like what's going to happen. You're going to have to start realizing that an Oreo box might cost you $7. And you might have to say, I'm going to eat two. I like them. I'm going to splurge on them. But I'm going to eat two this week, two next week. Those are treats. You might be able to barter with them too. So you have to go through your stuff and say, what can I barter? Or what labor can I provide to be able to barter? So if you're a who can fix pumps, well pumps, if you're an electrician, if you can fix septic tanks and things like that, you might be better off because you can barter with people where they can give you food in exchange for your labor. So you have to sit down and say, if something happened tomorrow, what can I provide this world? And I can tell you something, a lot of people that are focused on technology are going to find it really bad because technology, they're censoring it my friend in Canada that they are really coming down on censorship there and I posted the other day how some of the people who were posting all of the live videos from Canada they were told to take them down see because they don't want people to see anymore how they were praying to God how they were praising and worshiping him in the street they don't want people to see all the love generosity kindness all the hugs they don't want people to see that anymore because it makes them look bad it makes them because that's the evidence showing that they are doing tyranny right now. That they are tyrannical controllers. And they don't want the evidence out there. And they're going to continue to do that. They've been doing that with my channel for a long time. They don't want me speaking the truth. They don't want me telling you how powerful you are under the blood of Yahushua. The true Savior. The one that comes from Yah. You know, Yahuwah. Yahuwah. Yahuwah is his name. They call him Yahweh too. His Hebrew name and Yahushua comes from his name with the Savior at the end God's Savior well it actually means God's salvation is what his name is so we have to understand that they've been trying to hide the power see people say well why why don't they hurt other channels because other channels are not spreading the name of Yahushua they keep spreading the fake Jesus, the man-made name of Jesus. I don't spread the man-made name of Jesus. And you think it's easy for me to come out here and say this stuff with all the backlash and the people unsubscribing? I really don't care. I do what he tells me to do. And I know in my heart what he's told me to do because I can't be like all the other churches. He's lifting up a new people to speak truth. And nobody is speaking truth right now about this name. Nobody is speaking truth about his name. His name has the power to save you. And yes, he, it, the name is not what it is. It's the meaning of the name. This is why there's a meaning in his name. Because the meaning is what you're crying out to. When you say, Yahushua, you're saying, my Savior, my Savior. Yes, you can be saved under the name of Jesus. I'm not going to say that you're not. Because only... God, Yahuwah knows what's in your heart when you cry out to him. He really knows what's in your heart. Remember, we talked about faking it till you make it. He's going to know what's really in your heart. And he might save you at that moment. But are you going to continue to walk with him? Are you going to be so grateful that you want to continue to walk with him? A lot of you are not. A lot of you have had incidents, incidents like this where you turn to him and then you strayed. Because you were not grateful later for what happened. You went with the ways of the world. And this week I'm posting a video on the ways of the world. The, the Bible talks a lot about us not being of this world. So we have to understand that we are not here to be part of this world. We are actually supposed to be here to help those in the world get out of the mentality. Because you see how evil the world is. You see the things that they're doing. And they don't want you to know the power that you have. That's the problem that we have. 
that the churches have taught us that we have to be humble to the world because he came and we have to be humble to the world. We don't humble to the world, we humble to Yahushua. But everything that is righteous is our duty, when it comes to righteousness, is our duty to stand up for it. All of this pedophiles and all of these things that have been happening in the world, it's time to stop it. A lot of people know about it, but they don't want to do anything about it. They want to close their eyes to it. Do you know a lot of people close their eyes to what happened in Cuba? Didn't the United States close their eyes to what happened in Cuba? Well, here you go. You might want to call it karma. It might be so. I don't know. I don't really believe in that, but it could be. It could be God's trying to show a lesson to everybody for what you did. You allowed that to happen. Now, guess what's happening to you? Because you didn't stop it back then. And now is the time that we have to stop it. We have to stop it. We cannot allow these people to position these executive orders that are enforced out of emergencies because that's when we lose it all. That's when we're going to lose it all. And you say, well, but our military is going to go against them. Yeah, but they don't need your military. Your military, they've been weakening it, weakening it over the years. They have a UN military. And they're going to bring those in. You know, those are the ones that don't have badges and they don't have names on there. So that you see they're miscellaneous. You don't even know what they are. And they're all white. They're all white. I didn't see in Canada any of those that were black. I didn't see any Hispanics there. I saw that were all white. Very white. Bloodline white. Could it from them that N word that ends with an I? Could it be from that bloodline that is still in this world? Sure it can. I think we realize by now that we've been duped. And as good Christians as we are, we haven't been actually stopping the evil in this world been too comfortable we've let everybody else do it for us but now it's time it's time that we rise up and we speak about everything evil in the world when you go on a YouTube channel and you see people talking for the evil it's your duty because then you comply it's your duty to stand up against it you go to the comments and you see things like that it's your duty to say it stand up and say something you need to defend so then when people look at the comments they say nope there's 20 people against this that guy's wrong because all these others are right and that's the problem we have in society that people the churches they don't talk about homosexuality they don't talk about adultery they don't talk about none of this stuff that we have to talk about because we have to know that those things are wrong but since they're doing them in the church they don't talk about them because a lot of them not every church I'm not saying every church but there's a lot of infiltrators in the church and that is what the whole rest of the, of the New Testament is about when you read it. It's all about the infiltration of these evil people trying to get them and break down these systems, these systems of kindness, of love, and of knowledge of who you really are, who you belong to. That's, And it's still happening today. It's still happening today. So I'm going to leave you with that for today because... I want you all to really focus on what's going on in the world and how you can be a part to stop all the evil in the world. And you should go to your churches and you should tell your preachers that you want them to talk about these things. You want them to talk about homosexuality. You want them to talk about adultery. There's verses in the Bible you want them to do sermons on. Put the pressure on them. And if they don't do it, then maybe those are places you gotta leave. Because every time you go there, you're an accomplice. You know, the Bible talks about the Ten Commandments. You know, theft is one of the things they talk about, which is stealing. But that doesn't mean just stealing money. It also means stealing education from people. 
because you have a planned agenda and you take away the truth. You don't teach the truth. You're stealing their knowledge. You're stealing it from them. And that's what they're doing in our world and they're doing that with the next generation. They're stealing knowledge from us. They fake all this stuff in the media to not give us the true knowledge. That's called theft. It's called theft. And they keep us under this theft. It's a lie, but it's a theft as well. Because we have a right to know the truth. And when they keep it from us, they're stealing it from us. They're stealing the truth from us. Do you understand that? They're violating the Ten Commandments every time they do that. And every single time. But we win. We win. Every single time that they're out there doing their stuff, man, we win in the end. You know, this is a checkmate for us Christians. I want you to understand how powerful this is. How God had it planned that we always win. We have the victory under Yahushua. But that's not the only reason. See, the reason is, every time that they do something against us, every single time, not one thing, every single time that you come and attack me, or you're hateful about Yahushua, you get a judgment point. Boom. One. Tomorrow I do another video. Boom. Another one. You can have like a million by the end of the time that you go to judgment. Okay? So I don't lose. Do I want you to love? That's 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 my plan is for you to, to love on other people, right? But if you're going to be a hateful Christian, no. If you're going to be spreading lies and stealing from people, no. So that's uh, that falls under the judgment of God. So that's up to God. So guess what? I win in the end because God is on my side. And he's going to get rid. He's going to he's going to eradicate the evil in heaven. He's not going to let you go to heaven. You continue to be evil and you continue to talk about against God and all of this. Well, guess what? I still win in the end. I still win in the end because if you do decide then that means that I also won because I converted you. I, I changed you. I changed your mindset. I changed you from the ways of the world. You understood and you have received. And you understood because you received his redeeming love. So guess what? I don't lose. Both ways, whichever choice you make, it's always made to be the winner. We're always made to be the winner. Do you understand that? We win both ways. If you understand that, it's, this is a spiritual war that we're at. And when you understand that, you will see that you're on the winning side every single time. So, for all you Christians out there that think that you lose, you never lose. You always win. And that's because Yahuwah made the one and only mighty plan through Yahushua. That we have to go to him to repent or his judgment every single time is going to be your choice. So I thank you for watching. I hope you have a lovely day. I'll see you. I'm here at my shop. So I'll talk to you later. Bye. Hey, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Thanks for watching.